We're still losing money month over month. Um, one of the things, you know, I think there's a lot of, and we talked about this um, yesterday, is one of the things that has an effect upon the uh, number of site nights, and yes, they are down, and we know that. Um, one of we've got weather problems, we've got an inflation problem, these kids are still in school, um, and these aren't excuses, either the way it is. The, the we're comparing, we're, pri we're comparing uh, the same period year over year. Good. The consumer so the kids are were still in school last year at this time. Okay, th thank you, Gary. Uh, do you want to add anything to that, Lenny? Sure, absolutely. I mean, even, even though site nights are down, that doesn't mean one thing that it does mean is that we're not losing money at ten dollars, but we are making money at fifteen, or if not staying even. You, uh, just because your site nights are down at ten dollars, and your site night or your site nights are down at fifteen dollars uh, over the ten dollars, at the end of the day, that means you're make we're making money. So that's how revenue generates through here. Two thousand two thousand nights or 2,000 nights less, you're down $10 a night is more than what you've made by the $5 increase on the nights that you had, How right? How much is utilities down? I don't know, I didn't look at that. All I'm going to buy is what, I was, what well, was reported. I promise you, less usage means less utilities. True. But the increase in site rental was supposed to increase the income and it's not doing it. So I don't know how you can say that with utilities being down. Well, that, that's, utilities are not down enough, I would bet, to cover the difference in this, the loss of nights. It's got to be. Your, your, your utilities, your site usage is so much farther down for utilities, it's got to be so much more than what making $15. At the end of the day, you're making more of a revenue at $15 than you are at 10 because of utilities being down. And uh, there's, there's so many variables to what you're talking about, Gary. And uh, one thing, uh, the increase in salaries over last year, uh, the increase in supplies over last year. And so all that factors into what the, the checkbook balance is. The same as it's your house. And you're, I, don't, I don't know how that correlates to what I was asking. Well, you were asking about the cash on hand that it's down over last year. As, as, is our, as is the income. But one thing that you're not also concern, uh, considering is how much more dues was accepted at this time last year over, over this year. True, I don't know that. I don't, need, I don't know off the top of my head either, but right now we're still owed over 600,000. I think all, oh, we're still owed over 600,000 in dues for this year. I don't know what at this time last year, it's in the financials, but I don't have that off the top of my head. There's a lot of variables that are put in place considering cash on hand. And I was just responding to what had been reported. So. Sure, I totally get that. But I can't, I can't guarantee this, but I will say that uh, a month or two months or three months from now, things will look incredibly different because we are cutting costs as much as we can. And just one small item would be, in the past we've spent a lot of money on plants every year. And so last fall we purchased a little greenhouse that uh, we could keep plants over the winter. Now that might be something small to most people, but uh, the, the plants uh, weathered the winter very good. In fact, they have a little surplus of plants. They don't have a place to put them, so we may have to <laughs> plow up more, more dirt. Well, that was, I'm not serious about that, but uh, maybe we'll have a plant sale, who knows. Next question or comments, please. Sure. My name is Lee Wardroder. We've been a member here for 10 years. I talked on the uh, uh, golf cart issue. I'm confused as to what you changed it to right now because I tried to take notes and got mixed up, I guess. 
because when I got here Sunday, it said on the door $40 a day, and the lady inside said it was 30 last year. So did we move it back to 30? Uh, I didn't really catch a while ago what you said the price would be. So last year it was 35 a night or per day, and 30. they changed it this a uh, couple months ago to 45, and today they changed it to 40. So currently it's 40. It was already 40 Sunday when I got here. It was on the door. Well, I mean, I'm not arguing. I sure. walked in, and it's big, big letters on the glass door right where you grab the handle. said 40 then. I, I don't know what, what. I didn't put it there. Sure, yeah, I get it. I totally get it. But today it's 40. Last year it was 35. Okay. So I guess we got ahead. I guess our sign was ahead of our motion. <laughs> they could, it could have been. I don't know. You make a good point. I don't know either. Your numbers that he brought up. A man taught me a hard way when I was a principal in a school budget that if every line held its own, the budget worked. Well, that's hard. But you gave numbers a while ago that would help some of us who try to follow things on that printout. Had a degree in math, so it's just part of me. The number of nights this year for all the different things compared to the number of nights last year would be a great entry on the Treasure Lake, Treasure Lake website un, under the documents, and each month add to it. Yeah. Here's January, here's February. Then any of us can go back and see if the number of nights are up or down. I understand all that, but there is a point to where you do lose money when you go up. I, I mean, mathematically. Uh, and if sites are down, and you have to really do some figuring to see if it is profitable or not. Yes. And that's something we need to look at. Uh, if I can, real quickly, we do, I do put my um, occupancy report with the monthly minutes that go posted to the website, so you can see those numbers on there. On and the there's even a new, um, a, new, the a new Excel sheet that I have created that gives an idea of what it looks like over the past five years that will be ongoing year after year that will also be posted to the website. And it's even more of a detail of- You talking about the financial report or you talking about the usage numbers? I'm talking about the usage. And- I haven't seen that. Those numbers that I just gave. Well, look, and well, okay. then the, the, the going forward, like I said, even the new report that I'll have will even be more detailed of what I said today. It will give out how many park models, how many motel models, duplex and yurts, and, that, and even camping sites. So that would be, be right. more of a detail. That, that would help the ones of us who try to look for things. And, you know, and I, and I look for, you know, red lines, you know, what's, what's happening. One of the questions I have in now is on our, uh, I know it's all done by machine, mm -hmm. but what percentage of salaries does the park have to pay? Yeah, and I got your email, and I did send, as I said, a reply to this. I hadn't seen a reply yet, but when I figured it was like 23 or 4 percent for workman's comp, and that seems high. Maybe not. We don't set those rules. Right? I understand that, but I'm talking about the amount that's on the printout compared to the number of dollars of salaries. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah, it's, okay. uh, she follow me? Yep. Because you can't get a cost on housekeeping or anything else just looking at salaries. That's not cost. Okay? Cost is cost, and there's there's things added on to cost. Uh, I, I have one more question that I turned in hadn't answered yet, which really puzzled me. Uh, not a not a bookkeeper, don't pretend to be, but revenue. I, I do know what revenue is. That's kind of like money in my pocket, and I know what revenue of sales is, right? So how in January do we have a negative four thousand dollars? in sales revenue. So my understanding that we're looking into that, why, because I got that too. Okay, and I, I have them looking into that. It, does, it does seem odd. If I had to guess, there's an entry that is incorrect on there. Um, we don't- Last give, year? Yes. I don't think that they're, they're they don't give out a, 
a, a refund like you had stated in that email. It's not a refund, but we're not sure exactly what that is. You know, we did, we did buy 10 memberships back at the very end of the year last year, at, at the last month, which makes being December makes it that would be a negative because compared to what they sold, uh, we had an owner that gave all 10 of her memberships back to the park and we, we bought them at a discounted rate. That's my, that's my answer for that right now, but I'm not sure that's exactly what it is. Okay. She had 10 memberships and we bought all 10 I can't figure out how that would start this year's revenue as a negative number. Well, it just depends on when that entry took place. If it took out, if it took place after the first day of the year or the last day of last year. So that's what, that, if there's that little small time period here that could okay. have caused that to happen. But we bought all 10 of her memberships back at one time at a very highly discounted rate. Well, to me, those kind of things are red flags. Yes. That's, that's why I was, uh, and like I said, the percentage of salaries is a concern too because it seems awful high. Sure. 30, we're paying 32 or 3, almost 30% maybe. I don't have my numbers with me. It's yeah. pretty high. If you take all their withholdings and all the salaries and do the math, then it seems awful high. I get it. And, and one thing that our biggest um, hurdle is right now is that we are having to um, contract labor out for housekeeping. Um, we can't get anybody in housekeeping, so we have to contract that out, which is at a higher rate than what we start employees so, out at. So do you pay the contractor or you pay the employee? We pay the contractor. So there shouldn't be any withholdings on those dollars. There is. You still have to do withholdings. However, we don't have to pay insurance on them or give them benefits. But there's still FICA, your, your Social Security. Well, then we're, then still we're paying that. the employee. We're not paying the service. Yeah. Well, it's still it's a part of the law that you have to pay. Not sure I follow that. If you, if, if you hire a contractor and you pay a contractor, he takes care of the FICA it, because it's, it's he not, plays the employees. It's not the same as a 1099. This is they're still W-2 employees. So we're paying the employee direct then. Yes and no. There's still you still have to pay uh, payroll taxes and FICA and Social Security on those employees. But then you don't pay their salary. That's exactly right. So you pay someone else their salary? Yes, you got it. And that's under housekeeping then? Mostly it's housekeeping. We have some in maintenance and weed eaters and stuff like that. So in effect, they're all, they're all there? Yes. Okay. See, if, if you're going to dance, you've got to pay the piper. And I think it was last year, part of the year, we had so many cabins that we took out of service because we didn't have anybody to clean them. And so... You know, if we're going to keep those cabins open, we have to, we have to clean Well, them. quite honestly, uh, looking at the January printout, when there's 50000 more dollars in housekeeping, not counting this part we're talking about, then revenue from rentals, maybe they should have all been locked in January and February. I mean, if you go, I mean, that's a lot of loss well, for a uh, couple months. You say, you know, lower the price and there'll be more people come to them. Well, no, I didn't uh, say that. I said no, if it's no, costing no. that much to clean them, if it's costing 50000 to clean $20,000 worth of rentals, maybe we didn't need the rentals those month. Well, you, you would hear about it if you shut them down. Yeah. Because uh, we do have a service here that we still have to offer owners. That's why they bought in here. Even though you have January, February as your down months, we still are required to be open for a service to owners, and we offer them rental cabins at half price. But we, we squeeze the dollar so much that it squeals like a pig, and you can, you can take that to the bank. Okay. And, uh, I mean, we don't have the, the financials. We usually do, and I'm not an accountant, and so sometimes the, the financials put me in a tailspin. But I just want to ask a question. How many of you all do your own income tax now? One, two, you're an accountant. <laughs> so uh, I don't know whether you, you, you see what the point I'm trying to make. I understand that. But as soon as we get the financials, they will be posted online where you can see them. Oh, I'm not, I'm not questioning any of that. that. I understand that. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. But, uh, you know, we try to 
invest excess money where it'll make the most return. And so a couple years ago, I mean, we depend on Abacus for more things than just doing our books. And uh, they told us that if we invest the money back into the park, they figured it would give us about a 20% return. And if you find some place that you can get a 20% return on your money, tell us. And, uh, and so that's the, the, the first two yurts that we put in, they're paid for and they're making money. Yes, sir. Good morning. My name is Charles. Um, <clears throat> I have two requests. All right. Um, the first request I heard you talking about excess flowers having to put them out. <clears throat> they put in a beautiful little box right here on the entry exit to phase one. <clears throat> and it almost caused me an accident. Um, you cannot see the oncoming traffic when sitting at that stop sign. That, that is good to know. I will pass that on. Thank you so much. Uh, I almost pulled out in front of somebody just two days ago. Well, I'm glad that, that you avoided an accident, and, and that will be taken into consideration. And I don't know whether somebody here wants to step up and tell me who took the side off my pickup truck. <laughs> that they sure didn't stop, and I pick it up today, so guess who's going to pay the bill? Exactly. So. Exactly. But, uh, sir, we, we, will, we, will, we will take that into consideration. In fact, not only consideration, but we'll do something about it. Okay. Um, the second request that I have is, um, have you considered putting in a dog run somewhere? Many times, actually. We, we have, but who's going who's gonna to assume the liability for somebody's Doberman eating somebody's Pekingese. Well, I, I'm not suggesting that you have multiple dogs in there. I'm suggesting a, a space for someone to check out, use it for their dog, and return a key. You want to do it? <laughs> no, seriously. I, I mean. I, but see, these are all good ideas. Mm -hmm. But it costs money. Right. Okay? And it would take somebody cleaning up in fact, now, people don't clean up after their dog now because I've got a back window in my camper that I can see people that don't. Right. And if I knock on the window, it gets their attention and they get their little blue bag out. I know my wife and I are picking up, picking up some other people's too. So uh, I, I just asked the question. But, I, I, I mean, some know. things we would love to do. We would love to have an on-site veterinarian too, but it's, <laughs> we can't do that. Okay. But anyway, I did want to bring up that uh, that, well, that flower bed. It, it, it looks beautiful. It just it is actually a hazard. Thank you for your the safety on that. I never would have thought about that. Thank you, and I'll I'll mention it. If you come to a if you come to a park right by that stop sign, make a look right, and it is directly in your line of sight. Very good. Thank you. Uh, I mean, I don't know. You know, Lenny, maybe you want to speak to some of the improvements that's on right now one thing is the guard shanty out here uh, that'll be painted in the near future uh, somebody else back here yes ma'am okay this goes back I'm Susan Petty hi um, this is a question from another member um, also I'm told that are we offline nobody can hear us is our, there's no video or anything like that? Okay, well this is for another member who's asking this question. And they wanna know on the, AT, I'm just gonna read it off what they said, okay? On the ATM, who is paying for the ATM? They are not free. Who is paying ATM network fees? Who is paying for funds for the ATM? Who is pairing for replenishment of ATM from armored car and who is paying for the waterproof kiosk for ATM, who is paying for the insurance on funds in the ATM. Um, there are a lot of fees and they would have to be charged to customers on their transaction fees. Would that, um, what would that be? 
Well, first, there's no fees such as that. We only have one fee that we have to pay a quarter per transaction to the processing company. Other than that, we monitor the funds, we put the funds in, we own the machine, and we get all proceeds of it. Okay. Um, does, let's see. So, so there's no fees, no um, uh, just maintenance, or is it a flat fee? Do you guys pay rental on that machine? Nope, we own it. And we pay 25 cents per transaction is the only. So typically we put it at a $4 transaction fee mm -hmm. to you. And so we make $3.75 per transaction on that. Is there an upfront cost to put this in, install it, yes. and buy it? How as, much does it cost up front? As the motion explained, it should exceed, the funds should not exceed $4,000. The last one we purchased was $3,400. I assume it would be right around that price. And that's installed. But the ATM machine, ma'am, is a response to ideas that people had several years ago. Okay. Why can't we have an ATM machine? Okay. And so the one downstairs has provided a good service, and uh, so we just feel like adding another one would be an improvement. Okay. All righty. And um, this is another question um, that a lot of people are asking. Are we functioning as a non-for-profit? Have we filed with the Secretary of State? Are we current with that filing? Yes, we are a not-for-profit 501c7, and our, I believe our license comes due in May. And yes, that's all taken care of through Abacus. They take care of all that for us on that filing. Um, the Treasure Lake was in uh, first existence in April of 1983 and that is where that's where April comes into play of our filings of our not-for-profit through the state secretary okay so why is it that we're not seeing that updated our last entry on the Secretary of State is showing that the last entry of filings was in June I cannot tell you what the what the state website says but if you go down to the front desk you will see the certificate on the wall that we're required okay. to put up Okay, well, there has been some inquiries, some sure. not just me. I mean, several people's called them directly. Sure. And according to what we're told by the Secretary of State, that the filings have been terminated. There have I, been would, no I would encourage you to go down to the front office because we have a certificate that we have to post in the okay. front office, and it's sitting on the wall. Okay. And all righty. Um, I think that's it for now. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Mm -hmm. Thank you. If you have any more questions or comments, speak now, or don't put them on the website <laughs> yeah. or Facebook. A few years ago, with Lenny's permission, I had a, a box with a questionnaire at the annual meeting. The vote to say whether you would like a dog park, whether you object to a dog park, um, and here would be the cost, and I, I had all the plans from several different um, communities that have dog parks and as well as RV parks that have dog parks to show the rules, how it's run, um, et cetera. I had the plans from Woody, our maintenance ma manager at the time, wrote up the cost for us, the park, to pay to put in a dog park. The area could have been back behind the temporary parking back here where no smell or sound would get to any neighbors. Um, the vote on those questionnaires was 85% of the people who were here. That was annual meeting, so we did have a crowd. The board at the time said, no, you have to get 85% of the membership to vote on this. Well, that they, they obstructed the possibility of doing that. One other comment is that in one of the manager's meetings, you, Lenny indicated that maybe we'd be able to, uh, people would declare their pets as they came in the park. And I'm wondering if you've ever done anything about that or thinking about it. Can you give me your definition of declare? just to state that you're carrying a dog or a pet into the park. So you're getting ready to see some changes in the rules and regs that will discuss stuff as that with pet vaccinations and such stuff like that that will 
require an owner to let us know that they have yeah. pets, and stuff Great. like that, and you restrictions follow. also. To your po to your statement about the dog park, if you have a well-behaved dog that you can um, trust without a leash, we will, and you will not have any any problems with this. You're allowed to go over to the field and let it run around. Just FYI on that, we've allowed that for the last couple of years. Um, obviously, you need to have a well-behaved dog that will not run off, but we will allow them to run around that field at any okay. given time. That's good information, thanks. Okay, I'd still like to see a dog park, but that's a step in the right direction. Thanks. Uh, as far as committees, uh, Debbie Danner is, is the head of the Committee for Rules and Regulations, and they've been touring the park and making notes, and so uh, amendments to the uh, rules and regulations will probably be coming out in about uh, about a month. And then another thing I want to add is that uh, Brian Norton is uh, working on the uh, storage committee, and they'll be doing another audit when <laughs> the middle of May they'll do an audit on the storage. Okay. And so. Uh, one other thing, Christy, on, on the bylaws state that we cannot put up any more fences. Then, you know, I know. Who's asking if I did the survey? That's the way you stop it. Well, the bylaws were written in the 80s. So. Uh, Brian had a comment, too, about the storage. If you would make sure that you have numbers on the front of your campers, whenever we go through and do an audit, we need those numbers to make sure that the right campers are in the right spots. And also it will help maintenance out tremendously. We don't want any wrong campers getting put on the wrong site. So if you would make sure you got your numbers on the front of the campers where they're plainly visible. And I'll say, and Brian would, uh, would agree with me, there's some of the requirements on campers that are in storage that's probably not adhered to right now. Is that correct, Brian? That is correct. And so we want to bring everybody's camper, their camping, their their uh, storage spot into compliance with Treasure Lake. You agree, Brian? Yes. Thank you. I'm sorry Hi. to interrupt you. Uh, Marilyn Gray, I just want to make a comment on the dog park, we want to call it. I travel six months out of the year. I see these things in some of the campgrounds, and I would say absolutely not. People do not pick up their dog crap. There are uh, containers with poop bags. They don't use them. I've seen dog fights in these uh, enclosures. I've seen several uh, small dogs tore up because of a big dog. I personally would never, ever put my dog in one of those. They're, they're just not worth the money. They're not worth the insurance involved in them. That's what I want to say about those. Thanks, thanks, Marilyn. And uh, let me uh, say something to, uh, where is it? Okay, go ahead. Holly Ellis, may I approach? I do have a document I'd like to share with you. Sure. Excellent, thank you. Uh, So this is a follow-up to a previous inquiry um, from another member just a moment ago regarding the status of Treasure Lake registration with the Missouri Secretary of State's office. Um, as admitted, we are as a 501c7, which is a nonprofit. And if you go on the Treasure Lake, I'm sorry, if you go on the Missouri Secretary of State website and you look up Treasure Lake RV Resort Camping Club Inc. and you go to the current date, you'll see a listing there of several different files throughout the year. The last report that was actually issued from Treasure Lake is dated April 5th, 2022, that made us in compliance for the year of 2020. We are currently two years behind. The report's not been filed for 21 or 22. So the letter you have in front of you, dated June 6, 2022, does state, according to the state of Missouri, 
that we are Treasure Lake disillusioned or revocation for our nonprofit registration, which means the corporation is dissolved and may not carry on any business except necessary to wind up and liquidate its business and affairs. When I spoke to the Secretary of State office, I've done this on two occasions, about two months ago I called, um, inquiring, and I asked if there had been a reinstatement packet. They said it was requested in January, but it had not been completed. I asked if it was in the queue, because sometimes things get kind of pushed back. They stated it had not. I gave it a couple months, thinking maybe possibly that might be something that was going to be taken care of. I called this week, I spoke to a different staff member at the Secretary of State's office, who once again told me the reinstatement packet had been requested in January, but had not been submitted, and there was nothing in the queue. So according to the state of Missouri and the nonprofit registration, the only thing Treasure Lake should be doing at this time is dissolving. I'm wondering what the resolution will be for that. And that is 100% correct, incorrect, like I just stated, and I can prove and I'm willing to bet anything you want to bet that we are 100% good to do business. I spoke, I spoke with someone at the Secretary of State's office. I don't care who you spoke to. We have a registered letter that is saying that we are allowed to do state in the business, in the state, as I stated a while ago. As, as, a non, as, a non, as a non-profit 501c7? Cor absolutely. That's the only way can we're I visit able with, to do business. Am I able to visit with you afterwards and you can show that so I could get a copy and I'd be glad. I'm, I want it to be fixed. Yeah. So if this is something we could get to the Secretary of State to actually resolve this issue, that'd be great. Well, it's, it's been resolved. Everything is good to go. I, I'm looking at it right now. We're 100% good. I wanted to make sure the dates are correct. What, and what date are you looking at? I'm looking at if we are good through June or eight, May of 2023. And what, and what is the date that that report was filed? That I do not see. It doesn't say when it was reported. So if you, if you look under the one that I looked at and I asked them to look for the most recent, again, they said it was filed in May 5th, 2022. And the report due date said it was 2020, which indicated we were two years behind. That was the last registration report filed. But if you have that letter, I would be glad to get a copy of that, submit that to the Secretary of State, and see if we can get this resolved. Yeah, well, it's awful funny that they're willing to accept our state income tax. I, I think it's two different situations. This is, is the not. This is the nonprofit registration. Yes, however, we have to pay state income tax, and I guarantee it they're not accepting it if we're not allowed to do business. Yeah, so it just needs to get resolved with the Secretary of State Office. And yeah. if you have that letter, I, I would be glad to take a peek at that and work to get that resolved because according to Secretary of State, we, we are not I'll, fully registered. I'll be happy to email it to anybody. I'll, matter of fact, I'll do anything better. I'll post it on the website and I'll post it on Facebook. Excellent. I, I don't need it. I, can I come see you afterwards and get a copy? Yeah, I'm not going to show you it on here just because it doesn't show everything, but I'll just, I'll just put it on Facebook and on the website. But I can come see you afterwards and get a copy of that letter. I, don't, I can't make a copy off of this one, but they should be able to make it a copy at the front office. Okay, down there. excellent. I, excellent. I, I don't know how quick I can get down there, but if you go down there, I'll try to get it copied for you, and I'll have them make several copies and get it ready for you. So, perfect, and then I will, be glad to resolve, I will be glad to share what I can share with the Secretary of State's office and let them know that apparently this has been taken care of. Very well, thank Because you. this is, according to them, that's not the case. So Thank you. Thank you. Okay, one other committee that uh, I'd like Jack Mustard to speak on is the uh, volunteer committee he has. I think we have a question here, Melvin, first. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, let him go ahead, yeah. Rex? You know, we know him. Rex? It takes him a this, while to get up there. That's Rex Martin. I'm Rex Martin. I'm appalled at some of the stuff that's going on. We came here the first time in 1983. There wasn't much here. We've been voted number one park throughout history. I said this a couple of months ago, three or four months ago, forever negative that people put on Facebook we need about 10 positives because there's at least, <laughs> there's at least 90% of the members that think this park's going great. Probably more than that. A few people cost this park more than the rest of us put together. 
and that's the ones that complain on Facebook or get together and complain. I've had members that I helped sign up in the last six years call me and say, what in the world's going on? We're almost afraid to come back to Treasure Lake. Uh, do we need to sell out? What do we need to do? Because they're, li they're looking on Facebook and seeing the few negatives by a few people, not the majority, a few people. And it's costing this park. And it's time that you find something else to do besides besides sit around and try to figure out something. I have a suggestion. If you want to, uh, to complain, put it in writing, put a solution to it, and turn it in to the general manager. He will take it from there. But to come in front of a group like this and have complaints that takes 30 minutes to go over is ridiculous. Well, some things that I would like to say, I bite my tongue, but I am going to say something now. You see, everybody setting up here except Lenny is on payroll, okay? The rest of us come here, we pay our daily camping fee out of our own pocket. We even pay when our vehicle gets hit, pay that out of our own pocket. But prior to the year I came on board, the board was taking forty to fifty thousand dollars off of your park for their board expense. So you can take that to the bank. Go back and check the financials. <laughs> but you talk about site improvement, fifty thousand dollars would improve improve several sites. So I just wanted to say that. I think it needed to be said. Thank you. This is my pay, a bottle of water at the meeting. I, I want to go on record, Ms. Ellison. What it shows me is that we have a letter from Missouri saying that we are able to do business in the state. However, they are extremely behind on processing. So six months ago, our application was submitted, and it has not been posted yet. So I went on record and apologize. I'm somewhat wrong with the letter of understanding what the letter means. So it means that we are good to do business in the state of Missouri. However, it's not registered through the secretary yet. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to let uh, Jack well, Larry, okay. And then, and then Jack's going to tell you about our volunteer committee. I just want to say something. I'm Larry Walker. I was on the board for the last six years up to this year. Um, last year when we were leaving the park and the year before when we were leaving the park, uh, I'm the culprit that hit your gate. Okay. <laughs> the gate hit you. Now... Well, let me tell you a little something here. I've got a relatively brand new Dodge truck, and I had a brand new trailer. And when I look at Facebook, and I see someone saying that I hit a gate, just ran through it, it really makes me sick because I didn't do that. Followed the rules. I commend Lenny for standing and backing that up and everything. Uh, you know, the insurance paid for it. Treasure Lake's not out a penny, right? And you're welcome for a new gate. Yes. <laughs> but it did malfunction, guys. Needed it back. The gate is back. <laughs> okay, Jack, your turn. This, uh, that, could, could you hold it just let Jack get well, one of the perks of being on the board of directors, by the way, they said he said a bottle of water. I, I not only that, I got a good name tag. 
that was furnished by the park. Thank you very kindly. Uh, you will notice that all board members, when they're on park, should be wearing a name tag. So I just wanted to say that of all the people that have have been on Facebook and complaining about this, now I'm up for election. This is not an election speech. This is a uh, comment that face to face of all the people that has griped, and I've been on the board now, this is my third year, I have zero, zero people that have approached me and asked me the questions that's been out on Facebook. I'm ashamed to know that people put this garbage out without even come to a board member or to Lenny. It just makes me ashamed of those people. Now then. <laughs> now to my original. Uh, a lot of people have asked about volunteerism, want to volunteer. Have a lot of questions about what can I do? How can I do this? Uh, what I'm going to do is in, uh, I'm the head of the committee to get volunteers. We're making up, and Teresa has helped me, we're making up a uh, uh, book to go up front, and when you come in, the girls up front are hopefully are going to ask you, do you want to volunteer this year on something? There will be a book up there, volunteers, put your name and your number down, and for instance, I was, I've been talking to all the heads of all the departments. The, uh, uh, say for instance, Brad says, well, for, this is just a, for instance, we need some sites cleaned up. So we'll have a work day. I'll go up there and get some names of people that signed up for maintenance or somebody wants to volunteer for whatever. And we'll pick up sticks, trash, and sweep the sites, make the sites look better. And that's just one example. Maybe even uh, paint the guard shack up there. It'd be an excellent thing for volunteers to do. But there will be a book up there. And all you have to do, and when you check in, or you can go, well, the book's not up there. It probably won't be up there for another probably another week or so. But just go up there and sign your name up. Do you want to help us out? Hey, you know, I had a gal one time hit me up about a sign up here on the side building that, that or the building needed painting. She was just griping, griping, griping about that. I said, if you'll give me five minutes, I'll have Brad bring you up some paint and a brush, and we'll uh, let you take care of that. And I'm sure you'll be able to go ahead and climb the ladders. And, all of a sudden, her back went out on her, and, oh, I can't do it. Well, you know, but other people really want to help out the park, and I think this is an excellent way to get the people's names so they'll know where to go to volunteer. So, thank you. Sure, Jack. I mean, Jerry. Jay. Um, which reminds me, golly, which reminds me of something. Um, I don't know if you all know, but there's a Christmas dinner here for all the employees. And that Christmas dinner is lar 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 wow, speech therapy, is largely funded by the aluminum cans. And we came down last this week and it was like it was like a, a, a load of cans in the car. Even our neighbors contribute. So I would say this, you know, to to help out the park. And, and to show your appreciation for how hard these people work in this place, save your, save your beer cans, save your soda cans, and, and uh, bring them down in a bag and put them in the, in the, uh, the receptacles for them. And it, it wouldn't take any time at all. You put them in a trash bag and you bring them down. And no glass. And no, yeah, no glass and no medi or medical, no um, plastic. Last time I talked to Brad and, 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 and uh, he's right, because of somebody put in some plastic, it costs us 100 pounds in money, basically. Whatever 100 pounds would bring us, that's what it cost us because they had to pick it out. So it's just an idea. You know, if somebody's got some cans laying around, bring them in. But then let, let me just say something before I forget. I've got that uh, old timer's disease. If you think of something, you better say it because five seconds from now you'll forget. But uh, let me give a shout out to uh, Gary Jones. Gary and Jack do the breakfast up at the lodge. And uh, prior to that, I think Gary Jr. kind of took over when his dad passed away, done a wonderful job. And I asked uh, Gary yesterday if he inherited your dad's pancake flipper. 
<laughs> so he was he was quite good on that grill. Okay, your turn. But yeah, I appreciate all these comments and suggestions and hopefully, you know, we can find a way to resolve the problems. First I want to say I like your socks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I like that guy. I'm Danny Cochran, I'm also a minister of the gospel and you know if anything was done up here illegally, we would know that. By the financial statements, if we ever have seen a corrupt government, we have one right now. <laughs> Correct? Right. Whether you're Republican or Democrat, it's corrupt. I can guarantee you I know each one of these men personally. Me and Debbie bought in the year before last. The <coughs> first year we came here, I thought, we were everybody was coming up saying you need to watch this and you need to watch that one need to watch that one you know what i did i didn't say a word about anybody else i watched what each one of them done the older board members that were here if anything's ever done illegally it'll be in a financial report these men do not want to take your money the only thing they want to do is to make this park number one again for how many years i cannot believe that I watch Facebook too. I, I call it Fussbook because that's all it does. I'm a, I'm a minister. I put positive stuff on the Facebook, on different Facebook pages, especially my own. I answer to one person. I answer to God. These men answer, and lady, sorry Debbie, <laughs> answer to us as members. So if you have, if you have an issue with something, don't put it on Facebook. Somebody said a while ago, don't run this all the time. A lot of this is just you're stirring up trouble. Okay? We're not, we don't want trouble in the park. We left this past summer or this past uh, fall, went back home, we built a house. Somebody says, are you coming back to camp? I don't know. Because when you pull up to a campsite, you got 15 different people running up saying, Look what Lenny did, or look what Jack Muster did. And that's not what this park is about. This park is about a family. We're all members. When you, we have a family members, some we don't agree with sometimes, that's okay. But if anything is ever done illegally, it will come out in the financial report. I have to have our taxes done, by, and we get audited. I have to have my taxes. If anything is wrong, I go to the general manager first. He'll take it to the board members. So if you have anything negative to say, and I said this when I've pastored churches, you got any neg anything negative to say, take it up with the gentleman right there. But keep it off of Facebook. I see there's memberships being sold, being sold, just because people don't understand what's going on. I, I look every week, you'll see five or six members want, memberships wanting to be sold. That's horrible because we've come here for one thing. Ron and Ashley, I worked for both of them last year, done a fantastic job. You complained about not wanting things done. I I'm also was a work camper. I also volunteered at both of the festivals to, to dump trash because nobody else would do it. Not that I wanted any handshakes or any attaboys. I did it because I want the park to be a good place to come to. So any negative comments, take it up with them. Don't put it on Facebook. I know you have the right to do whatever. Just be an adult. Don't say, don't put bad things on there because other people that want to buy in are our members. You know, I get it. You get concerned about money. I'm concerned about money. But you know what? I can guarantee you it's all above board. There's nothing underneath the table. If there is anything underneath the table, your audits will show that. If you want an audit more, then you pay for it. Instead of having the park pay for it. If you want audited, you pay for it, and I'm sure the park would be more ha or the board would be more than happy to take your money for the audit. That's all I gotta say. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I'm Anita Horton and I was You stand on your tiptoes. <laughs> <laughs> it's on. Oh. Um, anyway, um, I am an accountant, 
and I've been listening and I apologize, so I have it in my phone, the letter from the accountants that's posted on the website, and we do not have an audit. Um, we have, the letter actually said from the CPA firm that they couldn't do an opinion because the board members didn't provide enough documentation. So we do not have an audit. They do a lot of accounting work, I'm sure, but you do not have audited financial statements from what I can tell. Um, if that's not true, I would appreciate hearing it. But I just wanted people to be aware your financial statements, from what I can tell, are not audited. Um, so there is that. Um, the other thing Lenny was talking about, the um, taxes for the contract workers. I am a, an accountant and I have done consulting work. If you're a 1099 vendor, you do your own taxes. The t um, so the park should not be paying the taxes on those people. It's paid to that firm. And one more, just a question. Those are just comments for what they're worth. But I would like some information on the Gary Ball thing. Um, um, just. I was surprised nobody said anything about uh, that. Ma'am, there was a letter put out, and so because of I know, but maybe it could be litigation, okay. I can only refer you to the letter that Lenny put online. Okay. Um, I was just wondering about that. I don't have, I came in under that program, and I don't have a copy of those, those rules, and you referenced a rule as to that had been violated, and I would like to know what that was. Okay. I know, but I, did, I haven't seen it, so. And, and one more, just stupid, stupid, stupid. But Lenny, I had put a request out to add the date that the dues are, that the annual dues are due on the invoice itself. And that seems to be difficult to get, to make happen. But I think a lot of people are confused we pay them once a year, um, and even Forest Park, the um, invoice didn't have that this time, and there was a lot of confusion, and people going, well, when are they due? And so if you could put a due date on the invoice, that might help. Well, to, to state on the, uh, the dues, I'll talk about everything that you just stated, but um, the bylaws specify when your dues, your dues are due, it's June 1st. Um, and but we don't put a date on the due statement just because we would need folks to pay earlier for cash flow purposes in the winter time mm -hmm. so we don't put that on there hoping people just go ahead and pay early enough um, and it does help us it does uh, do its um, job of us not putting that on there um, and it, but it does show a schedule at the bottom if you're late after August 1st, it gives you the penalty. Right. So that's kind of how we put out when the due date is due. But you're not going to occur a late penalty until August 1st. But that, that schedule is what creates the confusion. I'm just saying, because when I see that and people I've talked to, then you assume that that's the date it's due. I get it. Just, so just a suggestion. I get, I get it. And to the audit question, we get 30 party audited every single year we're required not only through our bylaws but by the state of being a 501c7 we're required to do that and turn that audit into the state by a third party now there is and i think i don't want to speak but i think all the board heard yesterday from our accountants that there is accounting principles that they are forced to put verbiage in the audit and those things, and I think what you read is exactly what they do. The board is not required to give them any information. It's only management only. And they are the ones that always request any information they want. And obviously, they have it at their fingertips anytime the audit company wants the CPA firm to give them any then why, financial information. Then why is the compilation letter out there but not the audit report? The audit report is always online. The audit from prior years are always online. It's the annual meeting book. The annual meeting book that is presented to the members at the annual meeting, that audit is inside that book and then posted online. Okay. So I guess I just didn't see that one. I'll just have to look further. Sure. If you want to go down to the front office, they'll print you off one. Okay. Yeah, they'll, they'll definitely give you an audit book. Okay. Thank you. You're Appreciate welcome. It. And this right here is Treasure Lake Resort. 
Camping Club Declaration of Restrictions and Bylaws. If you don't have one, we'll get you one. So this, this is what governs the park and governs the board, and governs management. And I'll say one other thing, okay, is that we do a gospel festival. <sighs> gospel festival. And who knows whether somebody's life will be changed because what they have heard. Because I've been there and it's good. Yes, ma'am. Again, I'm Susan Petty. We know you. <laughs> you do know me. I just. Right okay, all right. Well, I've never personally, I guess I'm having to put names and faces together. But anyway, okay, are our tax returns typically filed on time? Are you talking about the annual or the quarterly? Tax returns. Yeah, all of them are, are definitely filed. We always file for an extension, for sure, most businesses do, so they're not due until October. Uh, but yeah, they are definitely are, for sure. They're not due till October. So Correct. tell me if I'm wrong. I thought business tax returns are usually need to be in by March. That, that is correct. That is okay. correct. You, and 99% of the businesses in the world file for extensions, and that's exactly what we do every year. Okay. So 2019, when was that submitted, the I 2019 taxes? I do not have that off my top of my head. I have a stick one here because, you know, it's public. Tax sure, returns are absolutely. public. Yeah. That the 2019 tax return was stamped by Ogden, Utah, October 4th of 2021. I don't know. I don't know. I have I just, it right here. Would you like to see it? I don't need to. I just okay. obviously they it's, would be knocking public. on our door if it was a problem, so they're not. And it, there's no doubt that it was final. Okay, but that's 2019, October 4th, 2021. That's significant, don't you agree? No, because you got to understand what happened in 2020. This is 2019. What this happened? Been, yeah. But what happened in 2020? Well, if they were due March. The pandemic really didn't hit full blast, and we still we still worked behind our desk. We still used our computers. We didn't have to go out to do taxes. But the and ta everything's done electronically, like you right. say. So the pandemic, a lot of people who work electronically work at home. That you know didn't phase those people. Now, if that's the case, then I saw 2020 taxes. But can you tell me if? If 2019 wasn't even filed until October 4th, 2021, where is the 2021 and the 2022 tax returns? They're not posted, but are they done and completed? Yes. And they're done on time? 2022 is not done yet. We just came out of that year. Mm -hmm. They would do March. Just, yeah. Yeah, so they won't, they won't be done until yeah. October. Okay. Are you saying 2019 was filed until when? I have a stamp here, 2019 with a stamp with Ogna, Utah, which is their stamp. They receive it when they comes in, uh -huh. and it was October 4th of 2021. Okay. So that would mean probably 2020 probably didn't get done until at least after October 2021, which would have been an extension. Uh -huh. Okay. Show, it as, show a penalty? That would be 2020. Then we're looking now at 2021. Has it been done? Sure. Does it show a penalty? Uh, the 2021s are missing. I can't get them. No, no. I'm talking about 19. Does it show a penalty? Uh, this, is just, this is just a copy of the tax return that got stamped as it comes in. Okay. As far as penalties goes and stuff like that, you're only penalized if you, owe, if you owe money. Yeah, yeah. But if you don't owe money, then you're not penalized. So the question is, though, if 2019 wasn't received till 2021, and that would mean when did 2020 come in? Then when did 2021 come in? And of course, you know, that's yeah. so. I, I would encourage you to call our CPAs because I don't feel like you're going to take my okay. word for it. So no, call I'm, them. I, I'd like to hear, I mean, I want your word. I, I, I don't know that okay. answer. Right. They're, they're required to do that and they okay. are by law to do that. So I would like for you to okay. maybe call them if you want their word okay. for it. Okay, so my next question, and it just kind of helped me understand because I mean, everybody's trying to, we're all kind of confused. So, wouldn't you agree then these tax returns are kind of like our final answer? You know, the final answer, right or wrong, you know, good or bad, the tax, retre tax returns is the final answer. What we tell them, what we gain or lose, or et cetera, et cetera. But we have these reports that you guys give us. So, how can we know that these reports 
are the final answer when the tax returns aren't even in yet because those reports can be adjusted or changed by the time you get in front of your CPA and file those taxes. What are you saying? Do you not follow me? Oh, I do oh, not. <laughs> what, are, what are you saying? Well, I'm just asking. I'm asking, you know, when we have the reports, if the tax returns are done, how do you work off those? Or how do you know, how do you put this all together? We pay good money to have that done. We do not do that okay. in house. So, so taxes, I mean, taxes, uh, I don't know if anybody else in here knows the tax code, but I sure don't. But taxes in a business like this, they make sure that we break, we, we don't make a profit at the end of the year. And that's why those taxes are filed like that. But if we do make a profit, what happens? There, you, this kind of business here will never make a profit. But I've been told that there has been profit made. In, in what sense? In what, what? Profit in what sense? Um, for example. We, we can make $500,000 in profit oversight okay. income, uh -huh. and we can offset 500000 in expenses very easy in a profit place like this. Okay, so when you say very easily, you can offset those expenses? Of course. I mean, you're looking okay. at half a million just in utilities. Okay. Okay. Why are you trying to dig it up? No, I'm just asking. Well, That's I mean, I, I would I would encourage you just to come out with what you're trying to... No, I'm just uh, asking. I'm just wanting to know what, you know, I'm, I'm trying to trying to figure out the reports that you guys are, you've got these reports that you're letting well, us. We, we don't operate off okay. of a tax return. No, but those, we operate those are off of final. current financials. Yeah, you do the financials and then. You Which has nothing to do with taxes. Okay. So do you give those to the accountant? Give what to the accountant? The, your financials? The financials are made from the accountant. Okay, so he's the one that makes them. Correct. He puts it all together. Correct. Then, and he gets that information from. Correct. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, that's uh, but as far as the filing dates, I would encourage you to call them. Call the, our accountants, Abacus CPAs, for sure, 100%. So would you be doing that? Because that's really something. Wouldn't you want to know that? Absolutely not. That is you not my care? job scope. No, nope. of nope. course I care. Okay. But until they knock on my door, I have no reason to understand why I need to care. Okay. I'm just asking. Sure. I, I get mean, it. you know, I'm sitting here looking, you know, I looking give, in. I give them a call. I, I, I would rather you take their word for it than me give you what they tell okay. me. Okay. I, I really would. That goes for anybody in the room, not just you. Okay. That goes for anybody in the room. Call them. He was up here Tuesday, and he encouraged okay. anybody that had questions about our current financials, okay. any, anything like that, to okay. contact them. He encouraged yeah. that. I mean, as a business owner, I'm, I've been a business owner my whole life. Sure. I mean, I mean this something like this would not occur on my watch but you know if I was buying a business or I wanted to invest in a business and I have to see this kind of stuff this would be something I'd really want to know yeah, of course yeah okay all right okay let, uh, Rex do you have something and then when uh, when Rex is done okay then uh, Lee has it. go ahead Rex we're listening you people come up you people come up here with uh, 2019, 2020. If you have a question, at least give them a chance to know what you're going to bring up from four or five years ago. How can you expect them to give you an answer? Sitting up here worried about today, and then you bring up 2019. It doesn't make sense to me. Now, I feel like I'm an old time principal of a school, too. I feel like I'm back in school, and people are not paying attention to what's going on. They've got their own idea about what needs to be done, and then hit these people sitting up here in front of a crowd and expecting them to answer you, and you just stay on it. Now, it's time we stop. Hey, for those that don't know me, I'm Lee Stevenson. So I'm going to turn my back to the board because I want to address the group. So um, I understand we have an investment here. Trust me, I understand we got an investment here. We want to protect it, but let's keep uh, things in perspective. So some of you, and I just want to say thank you. Um, 
the calls, the texts, the flowers. Holly, you owe me a hug. First time we've seen each other eye to eye. Um, we don't know each other, but just the care and concern I've received from her and everybody else that's in here, the majority that's in here. So I'm standing in a hospital room. My wife is getting ready to be moved to intensive care. The nurse actually said, I probably wouldn't leave because we don't know how this is going to go. So we could lose her tonight, possibly. So, And I'm on a call, honest to God, true. I'm on a call with a, an owner, a fellow owner, um, of something that is very trivial complaint. Um, and I have to look at myself and say, my priorities are completely wrong. Um, we don't know each other a lot, but this we're a family out here. Um, I really would like to see us get back to that. I have really, really felt it. Um, I'm leaving here very shortly because um, I don't leave Jeannie very long. I have somebody watching her. This is important, but it's not as important as what's setting it home for us. So I just ask you to please remember that. Please remember to respect each other. I don't agree with all these folks. Gary and I don't agree all the time. Ron and I don't agree all the time. But be respectful enough that we can agree to disagree, but yet sit down over a cup of coffee is what I like to do and just discuss it. Um, and, and take care of each other because I tell you what, when we stand at the tombstone of your spouse or our loved ones, I don't care what Gary has to say. Gary may not even be there, but I'll be there. The family will be there. So please just remember that. So, but from the bottom of my heart, I truly appreciate the love and support you guys have given us. Um, and I, uh, Appreciate that that continues, but that's the that's where we should be is love and support of each other, but yet still protecting our investment without a doubt. So don't leave without a hug. Thanks. Okay, on that note, let's go home, and I appreciate what all of you had to say, and let's just keep in mind what Lee has said to us. Thank you.